A monetary contraction is a decrease in the money supply. The initial effect is in the financial sector. The money supply decreases. Central banks sell bonds in order to convince market players to buy these bonds, they lower the price of bonds. In other words, they sell the bonds and the market players give the money in return. The market players, their bond holdings increase, but they have less money. So the supply of money decreases. The decrease in the price of bonds leads to an increase in the interest rate. You know something that bothers me? We, as members of households, consumers, know if the interest rate goes up, we spend less. The cost of borrowing increases, so we borrow less money and we buy less goods and services. But in this model, private consumption expenditure is a function of total output, not of the interest rate. So we ignore the effect of the interest rate on consumption spending. And we only concentrate of the effect of interest rate on investment spending. In other words, if the interest rate increases, we only look at the effect on investment spending. Now, investment spending is part of the goods market. So we move over to the goods market. If the interest rate increases, investment spending will decrease. We must remember, investment is the addition to capital stock. In other words, we're going to build more factories. If the interest rate goes up, less of our investment projects will be profitable. So investment will decrease. If we build less factories, demand for goods and services in the economy will decrease. So we have a decrease in demand for goods and services and we produce less. So the level of production will also decrease. We already mentioned it. Private consumption expenditure is a function of output. So the decrease in level of output leads to a decrease in private consumption expenditure. But total output does not only affect private consumption expenditure, investors will invest less because production decrease. So investment will also decrease. We can show this graphically. We have the ISLM model. And we start with equilibrium level of production Y1 and equilibrium interest rate I1. Now we had a decrease in the supply of money, shifting the alum curve upwards. So we move from this position to a new equilibrium position where the new alum curve intersects the IS curve. Now we've seen the interest rate goes up and investment spending decreases. As the interest rate goes up, investment spending decreases, we move along the IS curve until equilibrium is re-established at interest rate I2 and production level Y2. So we had an increase in interest rate and a decrease in the level of production.